My husband and I have been married for 20 years. Our son entered university this year and left home. Life with just the two of us is going reasonably well. My husband has formed a baseball team with his colleagues, and he spends from morning to evening practicing on weekends. I keep myself busy with part-time work and going to yoga with friends. I think we are a couple of our age. One day, I received a message from a yoga friend. I'm at the station now, but isn't this your husband? Tentatively opening the photo, it was of my husband walking hand in hand with another woman. My heart rate increased. I thought, is my husband having an affair? He said he was going to practice for a game today, but could that also be a lie? After being asked by my friend, what will you do? Are you coming here? I struggled and replied, no, it's okay. I'll talk to my husband. What should I do? I'm scared to ask my husband. What if he really is having an affair? What should I do? Divorce at this age. I worried. Can I continue living a peaceful life as before by pretending not to know? I questioned myself. Snapping back to reality, it was already seven in the evening. When my husband came home, he turned on the living room light and said in amazement, What's the matter? Not even turning on the lights. Oh, sorry, I was sleeping. I lied, and he began to laugh and started washing his practice clothes. Seeing that, I thought he must have been practicing. Perhaps the photo earlier was a mistake. Did you stop anywhere else today, besides baseball practice? Not really. I thought you went to buy the new series you wanted. Ah, I haven't replaced it yet. The conversation ended there. My husband seemed as usual. I decided to believe that the photo was of someone else. Still, whenever he came home late from overtime or had to stay overnight on a sudden business trip, I doubted him. Bad things tend to continue. One day, I was stopping by the supermarket on my way home from part-time work. Then, my phone rang. It was from my brother. I hadn't spoken to him on the phone for many years. He informed me that our father's health was not good. He had suddenly collapsed at work, was taken to the hospital by ambulance, and after undergoing a thorough examination, was told he wouldn't last long. My mother had passed away a few years ago, and my father, now alone, had refused an offer from my brother and his wife to live together, insisting on living independently. I was shocked because he seemed fine when we spoke on the phone last week. I hung up, promising to visit him soon. That night, when my husband returned from work and I told him about my father, he looked sad. So, your father is. Don't worry about home, go see him. He said kindly. Encouraged by my husband, I went to see my father the next day. I suddenly felt dizzy and couldn't get up. Can't be aging. Sorry to worry you. My father said weakly, unlike his usually loud self. Did something happen? Did you have a fight with your husband? He asked, causing me to panic. My father chuckled. You're like your mother, holding things in. We don't know what will happen in the future, so live as you feel. Parents are happiest seeing their children's smiles. I wanted to talk more with my father, but he said, I'm tired. So I decided to leave for the day. It was only about 15 minutes, but I was moved to tears by how weak he was. As I waited for my tears to stop on a sofa near my father's room, a man in a white coat sat next to me. Are you here to visit your father? I am in charge of him. The man started talking to me. I hurriedly wiped away my tears. It's okay. You must have been surprised by the sudden news. Do you have any questions? He offered and patiently explained my father's condition and what to expect. He stayed with me until a nurse came to call me, which calmed me down significantly. Then, I went home and decided to call the friend who had sent the photo to talk. I thought I might have done something unnecessary. I'm sorry for making you suffer. My friend said. No, I'm glad you told me. I'm finally ready to confront my husband's affair, 
but I have no idea what to do. I honestly shared, and my friend, laughing, gave me advice. Actually, my husband is a lawyer. I'll ask him for advice. I felt relieved. My friend quickly informed me about a detective agency and even offered to accompany me there if I felt uneasy. Following that, I spent my days busy with visiting my father and working part-time. Around the same time, my husband claimed his work became busier, with increased overtime and business trips. I found myself eagerly awaiting the investigation results due to my husband's suspicious behavior. Two weeks later, I went to the detective agency, where I was reluctantly told, it's completely true. I was able to accept reality without feeling agitated. In fact, I felt relieved and calm. I was shown some of the many photos and had the past two weeks' activities explained to me. Hearing the audio recordings was dreadful. Baseball practice was only once a week, for two hours in the morning, and it was mentioned that the other employees usually return home immediately for their families. He spent the rest of his time with his mistress, even waiting at a cafe near the baseball practice field for my husband. The practice clothes were deliberately washed by him. All the overtime and business trips were lies. It was all time spent with his mistress. The most shocking revelation was finding out that my husband had told his mistress. My father-in-law is in poor health, and once we receive the inheritance, we will divorce immediately. It probably won't be more than a month, so let's reserve a purchase at the high-rise condo near the station now. The reason for his recent busyness was that he had started preparing for a new home, reserving furniture and appliances. There were plans for a pre-marriage trip next month, which made me feel dizzy. The thought of my husband waiting for my father's death deeply hurt me. It was enough to lose all affection. I was not sad. I just strongly wanted to divorce as soon as possible. I made a significant payment to the detective agency, took all the data, and, just in case, had it stored at my friend's house. Then, my friend introduced me to a lawyer. Having spent all my money on the detective agency's fees, I was anxious about touching our household finances, fearing it might affect the divorce negatively. Eventually, I swallowed my pride and consulted my brother. My brother scolded me. Why didn't you consult me earlier? But kindly offered to lend me the money for the lawyer's fees. After meeting with the lawyer, I asked my part-time job if I could work as a contract employee or full-time, and they agreed to a contract position. I managed to see a financial way forward. Now, how to present the divorce. One midnight, I received a call from my brother. My father had passed away. I woke up my sleeping husband, and we headed to the hospital together. After briefly visiting my father, my husband greeted my brother and his wife and then said to me, Take your time saying goodbye, and went home alone. From there, the funeral and greeting relatives kept me so busy I had no time to grieve. Both my brother's family and I were exhausted. My husband, as usual, offered no help. Moreover, he went to play baseball even though his father-in-law had just passed away. My brother and his wife were appalled but didn't say anything, knowing my decision to divorce was firm, which I appreciated. There was so much to do that the divorce was postponed. The situation took a significant turn half a year later. Finally, after completing all procedures related to my father, the inheritance amount was settled. When will your father's inheritance come through? My husband asked, to which I replied. It's scheduled for tomorrow, but why? Just curious. He was a director at a big company, after all. I wonder how much the inheritance will be, said my husband. I responded. I've heard it's about $700,000. He looked surprised and said. That much? Your father really saved up. I got a call from the lawyer today saying the procedure is complete. It will be transferred tomorrow, so maybe we should go out for something nice to eat. I said, emphasizing the transfer scheduled for the next day with a smile. The next day, after my husband went to work, I left the bank book on the desk before heading to my job. 
When I returned from work, as expected, the bank book was gone, and a filled-out divorce form was left in their place. I was surprised everything went so smoothly. I headed to the lawyer I had hired to explain the situation. I did not return home but went straight to my parents' house. Most of my belongings have already been moved. The items at the house were shared between the two of us, and we'll decide what to do with them later. My ex-husband and his mistress will probably live there, but since the divorce papers have been filed, I won't be contacting my ex-husband anymore. Three days later, I received a call from my ex-husband. What's going on? There's no money in the account. Where did the inheritance go? And, where are you? I deliberately matched his tone. The inheritance is mine. Why would you use it? It seems he has returned home. I need to contact my lawyer immediately. Why isn't there $700,000 in your account? Did you take my bank book? I had prepared it because I was thinking of changing my salary deposit account. I had planned to use the missing bank book. He yelled over the phone. Don't mess with me, we're married, so it's shared assets. Give it to me. But I responded. The inheritance is a personal asset, not shared. Besides, we're no longer married since I filed for divorce. Don't contact me anymore. You can live with your mistress at home. Goodbye. I could hear him gasping before I hung up the phone unilaterally. I immediately informed the lawyer's office of my ex-husband's whereabouts. I ignored all the calls from my ex-husband that followed. Reflecting on the past year's difficulties, I was amazed at how calm my heart felt now. When I finally checked the numerous messages, they ranged from complaints like, What's this about compensation? If you knew about the affair, just say it. To apologies like, Sorry, I was wrong. I want to talk things over. Without replying, I left my phone and went to work. Inside my bag was a new phone, which I would use from now on. Eventually, my lawyer said. The other party insists on meeting. I agreed to a direct confrontation but chose a public place to avoid any privacy. My ex-husband and his mistress arrived on time at the designated location. Seeing them after about a month, they looked worn out. It was my first time meeting the mistress in person. She was a cute girl in casual clothes, 26 years old and working at a pastry shop, as I knew from the investigation. My ex-husband seemed confused. My lawyer and I just smiled wryly and explained. The inheritance is left to me by my father, and my husband has no rights to it. The compensation is due to the divorce caused by your affair, which has hurt me. My ex-husband argued. It wasn't the affair, it was a difference in personalities. Besides, I was the one who mentioned divorce, not you, so the affair doesn't matter. I never thought you lacked common sense to this extent. A person at fault cannot initiate a divorce. It's not about who brings it up first having an advantage, you're at fault because you had an affair. Also, I'll be claiming compensation from her as well. I emphasized. She ex
exclaimed in dismay. Why me? And stormed out of the cafe, drawing the attention of other customers. However, my lawyer reassured. We know her workplace, so it's okay. Leaving my ex-husband pale. You know, actually, that girl, she's quite assertive. When we were having the affair, she seemed really sweet. She was always smiling when we were together, and when it was time to leave, she would say she's sad and start crying. My ex-husband began to make excuses, leaving me at a loss for how to react. Her cooking isn't good, and she's always so demanding. I used to find that cute, but now that we're married, it's become quite a hassle. He continued, complaining about her even though they had only been remarried for about a month. I've realized, I always compare her to you. You were always there, cooking well, waiting for me to come home. Can we start over? I was dumbfounded by his words, and my lawyer was speechless. It's impossible. I can't trust anything anymore. I responded. My ex-husband kept pleading for another chance. I remember, from when my father was declared in danger to his death, you never visited once. You were having an affair even when I was going through a tough time. After my father passed, you only thought about the inheritance, didn't you? I noticed several attempts to open the bank book. You were probably preparing to leave with the bank book and the filled out divorce papers once the inheritance came. I confronted him, and he began to tremble. Are you thinking of avoiding compensation by remarrying me? I asked, and he fell silent, apparently hit the mark. Feeling pitiful, I said. If there's nothing more to say, I'm leaving. You're the most important to me. Please, let's start over. He sobbed. Stop it, it's embarrassing. You're newlyweds, so work it out together. Actually, she's having an affair. It seems she married me for my money. He broke down crying. I left him crying, took the bill, and my lawyer and I left the cafe. Later, to avoid further hassle from them about the compensation, I called my in-laws for advice. After thanking them for attending my father's funeral, I revealed that my ex-husband hadn't informed his parents about either the divorce or the remarriage, surprising them. I had given up on relying on them, but the next day, my father-in-law, accompanied by his brother, visited my ex-husband. My father-in-law's brother, unlike him, is a boisterous person whom my ex-husband disliked. He became a strong ally, agreeing to the compensation payment. He decided to take my ex-husband back to the countryside under their supervision. Without any income due to their age, 
they promised to make my ex-husband work at a relative's factory nearby and pay me the compensation. The mistress, on the other hand, had a divorce paper thrown at her by my ex-husband. I reluctantly contacted her workplace. Speaking with the female manager, I learned a shocking truth, the mistress had an affair with the manager's husband. The manager assured me. I'm preparing to sue. Don't worry, she won't escape. And true to her word, the compensation was transferred a few months later. Visiting the workplace to thank them, the mistress was nowhere to be seen. Now, she's working multiple jobs to repay the compensation, including at a construction site nearby. Curiosity led me to see her working hard, sweat-drenched and makeup-free, being scolded by an older man. She must owe a significant amount. I believe she's facing the consequences of destroying a family. When I told my son about the divorce, he was surprised but supported me. It's your life, mom. Do what makes you happy. I plan to cherish every day going forward.